What If World is supported by our sponsors and by listeners like you on Patreon. Folks at home, I want to tell you about the podcasting platform Anchor. Yes, Abacus, about Anchor. Did you know that it's free? Oh, I was just about to say. And it's everything you need to get your podcast started all in one place. Exactly. I honestly wish I could have started my podcast on Anchor when I first began. It's so simple to record and edit your show with their creation tools right from your phone or computer. Yeah, even a wizard can do it. <laughs> and you can let Anchor distribute your podcast automatically across Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all the major platforms. And you can easily stitch in ad spots to your podcast to earn money with no minimum listenership. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm, as in fairy magic. Sure, why not? What if kittens played the clock in spiel? And what if unicorns were real? What if you could fly or travel back in time? We welcome you to What If World. What If World. This is What If World. Hey there, folks, and welcome back to What If World, the show where your questions and ideas inspire off-the-cuff stories. I'm Mr. Eric, your host, and today we've got a question from Luca. I'm Luca, and I'm from Vermont, and I'm six, and and I like my pet Cody, and my what if question is, what if, what if, what if cows can make money from moon and shape them into the deep sea and get track of box. Bye. Ah, a very wise question indeed. If you didn't get that, Luca asked, what if cows could make money from mooing and sinking into the deep sea and getting treasure box? And I think he said he likes his pet, Cody. Now, I, I, I might have misheard the name of the pet. But I'm going to go with Cody, and I apologize if I'm mistaken. Now, I get questions submitted all the time in a lot of different ways. And sometimes they come as an Apple podcast review. This one's from a mysterious figure known only as the Bee, and it reads, What if the moon fell in love with the sun, and Abacus P. Grumbler got hurt a lot? (laughs) Well, Bee, I never wish any ill upon What If World's characters. But I will do my best to answer your and Luca's questions. Oh, who's that? (laughs) Mr. Eric, don't start that story! Oh, hi, Abacus. What are you doing here? No, I will not participate in this story. Abacus, you're everybody's favorite wizard. (laughs) Stop it, Mr. Eric. Don't stop it. Just trust me, everything's gonna work out swell. All right, but at the first sign of danger, I'm out of this story. Agreed. So let's find out what if cows could make money from mooing and sinking into the deep sea and getting treasure box, plus the moon falling in love with the sun and Abacus B. Grumbler getting hurt a lot. Maybe just a little. But first, let's take a quick break. If you've been listening to What If World over the past couple of months, you'd know that a lot's been going on with the moon and the sun lately. <laughs> I've got you, son! It was April Fool's again, and the Phoenix Taco had clutched the sun with its lettucey talons after a couple of Greek gods shrunk it down to size. That was when the moon first saw her. Wow, look at that beautiful sun. I've never seen her up this close. Then a couple of episodes later, you might recall a few kids taunting the moon. There, go away, moon! We don't want you here! Yeah, stop lording over us with your moon... Shine! That really hurts my feelings. I'm gonna moonwalk out of here. And by that, of course, I mean slowly float. I can't actually moonwalk. I I see people doing it all the time, and I'm like, how do they do that? You probably need feet. I should go get some feet. But instead of finding feet, the moon just got another peek at the sun. She's so cool up there. And by cool, of course, I mean the exact opposite of that. The moon loved the feel of the sun's warming light. But eventually, he got pulled back into Earth's orbit. Even last week, when Farian and little Emma Stony Unipony 
met halfway between the earth and the sun. Neither one of them noticed the moon staring off in their direction. Wow, that lucky alien gets to live on the sun. But if I got even half that close, I'd endanger all life on earth. Hmm. But the moon wasn't always alone. He was lucky enough to have a few moon cows as pets. No, I did not say moo cows. They were moon cows. They just mooed for a living. Cody asked the moon, Do you think the sun likes me? Hey, Moo Moo, maybe you ought to ask her. I know, but I'm too nervous. And plus, I'm about 93 million miles away. You gotta express those feelings, can't keep them locked up inside. How do I get all the way to the sun? Right at that very moment? Abacus P. Grumbler appeared on the moon. Oh, where am I now? <laughs> Abacus couldn't breathe on the moon. Alaka spacesuit! <sighs> I thought I wasn't going to be in danger in this episode. Moo didn't get hurt. You've got a spacesuit. Hey, uh, Abacus. Oh, who's that? And a tiny crater on the moon was moving to make its mouth. Oh, it's just me, the moon. I'm so happy you're here because I could really use a wizard's help. Oh, flattery will get you nowhere. But keep trying. Well, I was just hoping you could, like, take me over to the sun just for a moment so I could sort of say hello. You want me to take you to the boiling hot sun where no human life can possibly survive for even a fraction of a second? If it's not too much trouble. (sighs) I hate moon days. But Abacus started casting his spell nonetheless. <laughs> no, I didn't. Don't put words in my mouth. And then Abacus looked down at the moon and saw two of its craters making big moon eyes up at him. Oh, that's a dirty trick, Mr. Eric. Oh, but who can resist the very definition of moon eyes? Fine. Ten seconds. As long as my magic can keep us both safe from the sun. Probably less. And Abacus warmed up his wand, quite literally, to put a big heat shield over the whole moon. Of course, when it might get me hurt, my magic works perfectly. And then... (laughs) The whole moon, along with Abacus and Cody, were right in front of the sun. Hello, said the sun. Nice weather I'm having, eh? (laughs) Little sun humor. Ah... Boy, I cannot hold this spell for long. Hey, Moon Moon, you better say something fast. But the moon's cratery mouth just stammered again. A sa sa ba o sa a cat got your tongue. Of course, you don't have a tongue. Probably never seen a cat. The heat shield started to crack around the edges of the moon. Quickly, Moon! A big, dry chunk of rock chipped off the moon and. Uh, well. Without thinking, the moon spun a little bit and chucked that big hunk of rock right at the sun. Oh, that wasn't nice. Oh, my toes are burning, my ears are singeing. We're out of here. And the moon was back in its own orbit, the sun as far away as ever. Well, that could have gone better. What were you thinking? You just, like, threw a pebble at the moon. Boys will be boys. What? Boys will be boys? What's that supposed to mean? Moo? I know, I just couldn't think of anything else to do. No, forget that. Just because it's all you can think of doesn't mean it's the right thought, Moon Man. Try harder. I know. Moo-in. Your best idea is moon? No. Moo-in. He means me, Abacus. You see, I'm a professional mooer. Moo and moo fellow moon cows. Please stop using moo for every pronoun. Moo a moo to tell moo what to do. Uh, I I really can't follow. Why don't you come back tomorrow when your magic is ready? And we'll go bang zoom straight to the moon. And Abacus left to let the moon cows practice. The next day, Abacus was surprised that his magic got him right back to the moon. Just a little suspicious, my magic is working so well. But as long as it keeps me out of danger, I'll be perfectly happy. Okay, I think if you just take the moon cows this time, they should be able to stay for the whole song. Please don't tell me how my magic works. We're almost ready for your abacus. Just mooning up. Moo, 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 moo. Don't you mean tuning up? Moot's exactly what I said. Moots? 
and Abacus grumbled as he cast a smaller heat shield, just around he and the cows. Then, they were back in front of the sun. Oh, hello, where's that fellow with the moon eyes? Thought he might come to give me an apology. Moon, moon, moon. Moon, 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 moon. There once was a moon. He was friends with a cow. He liked him a son, but he didn't know how to say that he did. So he asked us to sing instead. We stayed up all night just to get it right. So here's a cow song just for you. It goes like moo, 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 moon, and sun. The moon cows finished their song and gave the sun an expectant look with big toothy grins. Hey, what did you think about our song? Suppose it was nice. Right, well, <laughs> my spell is about to fail. Do you have a message we can deliver to the Moon Man? Are you serious? Moon, no, we are. Well, here's a message for him. Tell him he can have his filthy rock back. Something came flying away from the sun. A little burned up piece of rock. Now, let's just be civil here. The burned up ball of moon rock bopped Abacus right in his belly. This was not what I signed up for. And they were back on the moon. Moo don't know what you did, but Moo blew it, Abacus. I blew it. You wrote a song uh, about yourselves and your friend, the moon. You didn't even apologize for throwing a rock at her. Didn't we land on that was just boys being boys? I thought we landed on acknowledging our behaviors rather than writing them off with illogical excuses. Moo don't remember that. Of course Moo don't. Uh, now I'm doing it. Well, here's your burnt up piece of moon rock back. She didn't like it? Moop. Of course she didn't like it. You threw it at her. So I need to get her a better present? Yes, like an apology. <laughs> okay, Abacus, said the moon. We'll work on that. Can you come back tomorrow one last time? I have a feeling I'm going to regret this. But fine. Bloop. And Abacus blinked away. Are Moo thinking what Moom thinking? You know I am. The moon cows put on their wetsuits and dove toward the deepest sea and what if world. Now moon cows are only good at two things mooing and sinking. So they sank like stones to the bottom of that deep sea and found a treasure box. Those cows who weren't busy mooing this song that you're hearing right now grabbed the treasure box and brought it back to the moon. The next morning, Abacus came back, bright-eyed and bushy-eyebrowed. All right, how'd that apology turn out? Oh, we didn't go with the apology plan. We went with the Get Better Rocks plan. I don't recall that plan. Of course you don't. Moo Move had just about enough of your mooditude. Wow, that really puts things in perspective. Listen, Moon, I'll help you out this one last time. But you're not sending me and your moon cows. You're going by yourself. Ah, uh, okay, if that's what you think. Yes, yeah, so I would rather not get hurt again if at all possible. And Abacus teleported the moon back closer to the sun leaving he and the moon cows floating around near the earth. The moon was nervous, and this close to the sun, without Abacus's protective magic, wow, her heat didn't feel so warm and cuddly anymore. Hi, sun. How are you back, moon boy? It's moon man. And have you been acting like a moon man? I think so. Then I don't think I like moon men. Oh, I know you don't, but that's why I brought you these nicer rocks, because you didn't like the last rocks. And the moon showed her the treasure box, full of glittering gems. Seriously. And a solar wind blew off the sun, knocking the stones and gems right off the surface of the moon. Do you think they're gonna work it out? I honestly don't think so, no. But maybe he'll learn a little less. Oh, dear. And the treasure box and all its gems came crashing right towards Abacus. Oh, dear. Ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah. This was not 
supposed to happen this week? And Abigus dodged out of the way of every last one. Oh, I didn't get hurt this time. <laughs> the moon was starting to sweat under the hot glare of the sun. Never mind, moon. Just go home. No, I, I want to learn. What did I do wrong? You throw a rock at me. You send your friends to sing some crazy song. Then you come back, try to placate me. With what? Gems? I don't want gems. You want an apology? There it is. I think that's the first thought you've had that wasn't about yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, when you're the son, you have to get used to people taking you for granted. No. 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 Now you're disagreeing with me. Yeah, boys will be boys isn't a good excuse. So there's no good excuse for people taking advantage of you. It's a good thought. Maybe I can share a good thought with you every now and then? That sounds like a plan. Okay, it's a day. <coughs> no, no, not that. Not at all. Uh-uh. I mean, uh, a plan. And as Abacus's spell started to fade, the last thing the sun saw of the moon was a big craggy smile. Abacus, I did it, said the moon, back in its orbit around Earth. What happened? I apologized. <laughs> Ab Abacus? <laughs> and Abacus's head burst out of the rocky ground of the moon. You reappeared right on top of me. Oh, I'm so sorry. And you know that thing when you hold your nose and your mouth closed and then you kind of <coughs> like that? Well, the moon did that to pop Abacus right out. I knew I'd end up getting crushed by a celestial object today. So are Moo and the Sun an item? Oh, no, I, I blew that forever. I gotta let that go. But it's a big, mostly empty universe out there, and I think now I might have another friend in it. Then, my boy, you've learned a very basic lesson about human decency. Try not to forget it. Well, as a thank you for all your help, I can have the moon cows give you a ride home. Now that is thoughtful. I've expended so much of my magic this week, so why do they have a spaceship or something? Cody the moon cow snapped on his wetsuit. Move you ever been deep sea diving? No, I haven't. Why do you ask? Well, you're about to get a lesson in sinking from the experts. And Cody the Moon Cow snatched onto Abacus between his two bull horns and... I blame you, Mr. Eric! The end. All right, Luca and B, I hope you enjoyed your story. Folks at home, if you haven't submitted for our art contest, you're running out of time. June 15th is the last day we'll take new art, and I will pick at least one piece at random to inspire a story at the end of June. We're also sharing them on our Facebook group, What If Worlds Conversatorium. It's a private group, and of course, we're only ever going to share first names of kids, but I hope you come along and check it out. And I've got great news for my Patreon members. Now that I've finally finished setting up my studio, with a lot of help from you, I'm going to be able to get ahead on recording episodes, which means that my donors are going to get early access to stories. Never mind ad-free episodes and a story answering patron-only questions every month. If you haven't joined us on Patreon yet, please go to patreon.com slash whatifworld. You can support us for as little as 50 cents per story, and it'll be helping me do this for a living. I'd like to thank Karen Marshall O'Keefe, my co-editor and producer, Jason O'Keefe for our art, Craig Martinson for our theme song, and to all you kids at home who have ever admitted to a mistake, rather than making a silly excuse for it. Can you think of a mistake you may have made this week? How might you make up for it? And until we meet again, keep wondering. Keep wondering.